Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Easter Sunday live stream. So happy Easter to everybody. And today we're going to talk about is front running millionaires. And I've said this before. I've said this a lot of times, actually. As things progress, especially in the crypto digital asset market, you're going to see a lot of the traditional finance get into the space that we've been in for months or potentially even years or more than a decade for some of us. And like I've said before, I think we're going to front run everybody as they play the game of catch up. And what I'm talking about, of course, is uh, the market itself. And today, just to take a, a little uh, optic view of what's happening, not a bad day. We're almost at uh, 2.8 trillion market cap. And uh, what I want you to focus on as I scroll down here is not the, the one hour, the 24 hour, but the seven day and how things have been not popping off, but doing a pretty darn good job. And with Bitcoin, we're up 7%. Ethereum 6, BNB 7, Solana up 11%. XRP, eh, the stable coin. Uh, Dogecoin. Look at that. Dogecoin in seven days up 22%. I don't know if you know this, but uh, remember that guy, the Dogecoin millionaire, the guy who put in like $100,000 plus into Dogecoin and then didn't sell anything in the uh, crypto market. He actually, throughout the bear market, he tumbled all the way down below, I think, his initial investment. And now he's back up to like $2 million. So there is a case to be made for diamond handsing some things. Now, 99% of this is not a good idea because most of this is trash as far as like crypto. If you go past like into like the 300s, but I mean, congratulations to him. <clears throat> Cardano, not doing much at all. Ton coin, Shiba Inu, one of the, uh, <clears throat> I, I like this term, one of the blue chip meme coins, 9%. 9%. Polka dots up for Bitcoin Cash up 25. And let's see some other big ones. Uniswap, 9%. Look at ICP. Woo, 30%. Nice AI play. Litecoin's up almost 15% after being named a commodity by one of the lawsuits pending uh, by the CFTC. So that's good. Near 10%. I mean, everything's up. Filecoin. <clears throat> but I want you to notice this one. Dog with hat is up near 100% in seven days. Who'd have thunk it? Well, the people who thunk it are the people that are getting big into meme coins like we talked about yesterday. And of course, uh, we talked about that. Very risky play. It's up to you to do that. But I will urge you, if you do do this and get into the meme coins and degenerate gambling, just remember, take profits along the way. If it doubles, take your half out. And then uh, just sit and let the, let, the, let the rest of it ride. If it doubles again, take that half out. That, may, that means you make some profit. And then on and on and on until you can't half out anymore. And I was just taking a look at this. I'm like, maybe it's because there's this new game out. <laughs> somebody made somebody made a game, Dog with Hat. There's a link in the, in the description. And they named it dogwithhat.ai. Ridiculous. And it's pretty much, really, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a clone of Flappy Bird, essentially. Look at this. Actually, it's much easier. Anyhow, who cares? So that's what's going on in the uh, market itself. Here's the big story. And again, when we read through this, think to yourself just how early you've gotten in and how other people are getting into it right now. So Grayscale, yes, that Grayscale is launching a proof of stake investment fund for millionaires. Now, I don't know how they're getting away with this legally, and we'll just take a, take a look at this. So Grayscale is launching a dynamic income fund for investors with a net worth of over 2.2 million. So again, if you want to get into this, I don't know why you would, but if you did and just said, hey, this is an easier play, you have to have 2.2 million of net worth to get into that. The fund will invest in only proof of stake tokens. And uh, of course you can see here that uh, looking at uh, the spot Bitcoin ETF, Grayscale is still above uh, BlackRock, I bit. Looks like they still have uh, 23 billion under management, but I think that'll change as time goes on, obviously. But here's the weird thing about this. Of course, we know that uh, if we want to get into any type of tokens, any type of cryptos, we'll just go to our favorite exchange or DEX and that'll be that. But look at this. In its disclosures, Grayscale outlined how GDIF, that's the name of the fund, will function. Interests in GDIF have not been and will not be registered under the U.S. Securities Act of 1933 or any state or other securities laws. The fund will not be registered as an investment company under the U.S. Investment Company Act of 1940 and will not be required to adhere to certain restrictions and requirements under the Investment Company Act. Investors will not be afforded the protections of the Investment Company Act whatsoever. Here's my question to everybody. 
I know how Gary Gensler is big on disclosures because that's what's going to save everybody. Even though I think it's quite ridiculous, didn't really save anybody when, you know, Bernie Madoff came about for the last 20 or 30 years when he was running his fund. Lots of disclosures, even though he's doing a Ponzi scheme, regardless. If you had something like that and there was a disclosure there and you could just say, okay, this is what I want to know, that there's no uh, there's no safety net afforded to me. This is not under the, under the uh, Securities Act, but I'd like to invest. If that is how they're doing it, I just don't understand legally why we just don't go that route. Of course, I'm not a lawyer, so of course, fill me in on the comment section. It's just interesting how they went through that. And if we take a look at it, here is the actual Grayscale Fund, the GDIF, Grayscale Dynamic Investment Fund. And when it, when it talks about of what they're going to do as far as the staking part of it, this is how it's going to work. Investors commit the capital. Using quantitative and quantitative factors, we invest capital across a portfolio of proof of stake tokens. We stake the tokens that earn rewards. We monetize those rewards into cash weekly. We distribute cash to investors. And I'm th there's two things. First of all, remember the, how they're doing that. They're investing in the staking. They're taking the rewards. They're putting it into cash. They're giving it back to the investors. Here's, the, here's what they're trying to look at. Osmo, which I thought was Cosmos, but apparently if we're looking at the ticker symbol of Osmo, it's osmosis. And that is a staking vehicle, I guess. Okay. Uh, I'm not big into Osmo. I know people, some people are, and if you hold it, great. Uh, that's fine. Solana, Polkadot, or Dot, and then the majority, which is others. So they don't really know what the, they, they know what it's going to be. But I just found it interesting that Solana and Dot are in there, which would be a big boom for Dot because that's been lagging quite a bit. So I'd like to see Dot catch up because it's in my bag or portfolio. And Solana is like one of my top uh, holds. So hey, might, here or there, I'm pretty happy about that. And then it talks about what it actually is. So saying all this, and again, about the whole staking part, this is what it comes down to. I don't know how they're getting away with this and, I, and more power to them if they do. But there was an article. It says the SEC scores big win and lawsuit against crypto exchange Coinbase. Let's be 100% clear. They didn't really score a big win. All it really was is that they were able to move forward. Coinbase came to dismiss this lawsuit, citing it as frivolous. And uh, the court said, no, 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 we're going to have to go forward. That's not a big win. That's just essentially going, okay, now, you have, now we have to go through discovery. And now we have to go through the whole process, just like they did with Ripple. So we'll see how it all plans out. I'm not saying someone's going to win. I'm just saying it's not, a, it's not a huge win. But this was the interesting part about this whole case. The court finds that the SEC adequately alleges that Coinbase, through its staking program, engaged in the unregistered offer and sale of securities. Staking program, securities. So I guess Grayscale is just going to bypass all of that by just saying, hey, we're not going to... Uh, we're not going to come in. We're going to say that uh, we're going to give a disclosure that says that this is not a uh, an investment company, and no one is going to have any type of protections under the Investment Company Act. If it's that easy, why can't we just do that? Anyhow, not a lawyer. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. I just found it e interesting how that works. And of course, if uh, millionaires are getting into Solana finally and Polkadot finally and Osmosis finally, where does that leave us? I think it's in the money. Anyhow, let me show you anything about that in the comments. And one more thing, it's not all roses and sunshine. This is a story that was, uh, I think it was a couple of days ago. I wanted to cover this real quick because I know like a lot of channels, you know, they like to cover like, you know, the moon boyish stuff and how great it is. I just want to give you a dose of reality. And this is the reality. This is from uh, Eleanor Terrett. You should follow her. Got a Great plethora of information, especially if you like cats. She loves cats. On Fox Business. And she talks, uh, this was, do, 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 do. yeah, March 30th. Excuse me, this was uh, just yesterday. So it looks like there's a there was a court case. It was the Federal Reserve versus Custodia Bank. Custodia Bank specialized in digital asset payments and custody solutions. They wanted to be or have a primary charter or as it's called here, a master account application. And they said, look, we want to do this and we're not going to uh, do any kind of, as it's termed here by Robert Breedlove, fractional reserve, any kind of fractional reserve lending. We'll hold as much as we need to. We won't do fractional reserve lending, but we'll also offer the options of crypto and digital assets, Bitcoin being the big one. 
and they were denied. They took Federal Reserve to court, and here's what happened. The Federal Reserve won. Essentially, that's what it is. But what Eleanor Terrett brings to the, to the table here, she says, there was two opinions. One was denying the Fed's motion to dismiss, just like we saw the other one. The second is from Friday's decision on summary judgment where the, the judge sided with the Fed against custodia. And it is interesting because in June 8th, the judge stated, this cannot be read as Congress's impromptu on Federal Reserve banks holding carte blanche to grant or deny master account applications. And then in the final decision said, this amendment confirms that Federal Reserve banks may reject applications from depository institutions. So what it's saying here is, hey, you can't give total power to the Federal Reserve. And under, under here, it's saying, hey, the Federal Reserve has total power what they want to do. So it's a little bit off, but it is what it is. It's a loss. It's a loss for banking. It's a loss for crypto. It's a loss for individuals who would like to use custodial services such as custodial bank, uh, custodial bank. And uh, I think it's a real travesty, but that's where we're at. And uh, we'll take the loss and move forward. Also, FTX, after the sentencing of SBF for 25 years, just this week, it looks like they're going to sell off 7.5 billion blocks on. Now, before everybody freaks out and say, Rob, why, why are you spreading FUD? I'm not. I just read the article. This is the information. Don't be a thumbnail investor. Watch this. So here's what we got. On Wednesday, Canadian crypto infrastructure firm Neptune Digital publicly announced that they had completed a strategic acquisition of almost 30,000 soul at a price of $64 per token. It's pretty good. I'd like to have that option. I'm not a billionaire though, but if we take a look at Solana, it's at uh, almost $200. So, uh, hey, honestly, good for them. So here's what happened. This represents a 67% discount to its market value at the time. 20% of these tokens will be released in March of 2025. So we've got a whole nother year, right? Have fun because in March 2025, I don't even know if we're going to be in a bull run. So that is one of the stipulations that they, I guess, purchased that at that massive discount. So 20%. What about the other 80%? One of FTX's creditors, Sunil Kuvari, said FTX had sold some of their 10 billion sold tokens at a 70% discount. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. The rest of them are on a linear release scheduled until January 2028. So 20% will be released in a year. And then a linear release that could be daily or that could be monthly uh, for the next three years after that. So if everybody's worried about this, if you see this story come out someplace else, this is why I like to cover these things. Just understand that it's going to take a long time to sell that Solana. That's all I'm trying to say. And uh, I think it's not a big deal. Anyhow, that sounds good. See how it all works out. And then also uh, yesterday we talked about two things, Solana, and uh, of course, the ecosystem wallet issues, some rug pulls that uh, I was involved with. Fun, 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 fun stuff. We also talked about meme coins. And I brought up my friend, Steven. And I said, if you guys want to know about meme coins, I'm not the guy to, to follow. Uh, there are people that are much more savvy. Uh, Steven is one of those guys. There's a link in the description. And I said, just follow him because he's got good information about uh, the meme coins. And I said, just look through his list of what he's investing into and just you know, do your own research from there. This was a funny thing. So this was, when was this? This was yesterday, because he had been talking about, <laughs> he'd been talking about this stupid meme coin called uh, Shark Cat. And I was like, okay. And uh, this was in his, in his feed and he said, hey, uh, good news, it just doubled in 24 hours. And then uh, yesterday when we, when we covered uh, his, his meme coin profit and loss was 66,000, now it's 75,000. And if you just would have follow, seen that, you could have figured out Shark Cat and you could have gotten the Shark Cat yesterday. Yesterday was the 30th of March, right? Yeah. We did the, we did the video around noon-ish. So the price then was uh, 17 cents and then it doubled in price somehow. To 38 cents and now it's down to a, a wispy 28 cents so it's just interesting uh how those work out again that's lot that's 
I'm not going to say it's luck, but I'm just saying that uh, there's a lot of crazy gambling. But just remember, for you to win in meme coins, someone else must lose. So just remember that. Take it with a grain of salt. And I that got me thinking about, well, you know, what's the next big play? And I've been hearing a lot of chatter about uh, Brett. This is the this is on the uh, base blockchain, which is from Coinbase. And I was like, yeah, you know, I could get into that. Probably not the best time. I'm not really good at this. But it went from 0 0.001, so like a fraction of a penny on February 29th, and now it's uh, 8 cents. So yeah, probably not a great time. But I was like, I just wanted to play around with it, just see how this works. Because I'm really interested in like the ecosystem and how, you know, transferring things from wallets and, and, and uh, moving on the layer twos and how this is going to work out. Because I'm a bit of a skeptic on Ethereum layer twos. And I saw this because if you want to get into that meme coin, you have to transfer Ethereum over to um, uh, the base layer. And this is from Undertow. He says, hey, you can convert mainnet ETH to base in two steps. No bridge freeze, no waiting. And he tells you how to do it. But then someone said, no, no, just do this. Just go to Coinbase and then send some Ethereum to base. Because when you click on send, and I have to tell you, hold on real quick. Let me close this green screen. Starting to rain out there. So anyhow, when you click on send on Coinbase, and this is actually for like USDC as well, you can pick, you can pick the actual uh, rails that you want to use. And of course, if you want to do a theorem, that's fine, but it's a buck sixty, which isn't bad because they do batching. I know some people say, well, what about the $15, 20 $55? Well, we'll get to that. But I noticed something yesterday when I was trying to do this is that base used to be a fraction of a penny. Arbitrum used to be a penny or less. Avalanche was like, that's eh, it's about that same, five, six cents. And look at Optimism, 31 cents. Polygon is a nickel. For these layer twos, I thought Denkuma was supposed to solve this. The price of the layer twos weren't supposed to go up. They were supposed to keep going down, unless I'm missing something. So I'm like, okay, well, we're not really in the bull run yet. So I wonder what that price is going to look like later. And I know it's cheap. People say, well, that's cheap. That's, you know, three, four, five cents. That's true. It's better than, you know, 55 bucks, but it's just kind of like, where does this stop? Where does this, you know, where does the, where does the price stop? So you can do this and on Coinbase, it works out pretty well. You can transfer it to your wallets and, you know, have fun with that. But if you're going to use Uniswap or a DEX, just know it's going to look something like this. I'm using base. I actually bought the bread token, but the fee was 18 cents. So I was like, what, how did this go from? Three cents to eighteen cents. Well, there's additional fees on dexes, and and there's you know they have to get their cuts, and everybody has to make money, and blah blah blah. So just be aware that this is going to happen if you use a centralized exchange. Sometimes the fees are pretty reasonable because again they batch instead of just sending them out individually, they'll batch you know hundreds or even thousands of different transactions, and they'll put it on the main chain, and it won't be near as expensive because it's all shared. But if you're doing dexes, just know that it's uh, kind of pricey. And that's where we're at. So anyhow, let me show you anything about that. And then lastly, lastly, we'll get into the Q&A a little bit. Just so everybody knows that there's two things. Uh, one is that taxes are coming up. Yay, everybody loves that. April 15th. So the government can take your money and spend it indiscretionally and do whatever they want to it. And of course, uh, have no oversight. That's the government. So I'm not uh, saying that's the greatest thing, but I don't want everybody to go to jail. So just know that's at April 15th. Also. Uh, this will be April 15th is the last day to contribute to your IRA for 2023. So look, what's great about an IRA is that it's tax, well, a Roth IRA is tax free when you take it out at 59 and a half years old. Also, you can trade within your Roth IRA and there's no taxes on it. So if we, if you would have, or we would have, uh, purchased Bitcoin about a year ago, they've been pretty cheap because you can only contribute so much per year, seven, 8,000, somewhere around there. And right now, I think the price is only going to go up. So if you do this before April 15th and your Roth IRA, uh, you can contribute for 2023. And then April 16th or 17th, you can contribute for 2024. So just uh, trying to make that uh, easy as much as possible. Now, as we know, I use uh, iTrust Capital, but there was this thing that, that came up and it was off balance and on balance sheet options. And just so you know, centralized exchanges like Coinbase, Binance, and FTX operate on an on balance sheet approach, which means they can pretty much claim and intermingle funds. I trust capital is off balance and there's low fees. 
So what I did was uh, I sat down with a man, Jared Feldman, and we talked about this, about what's happening and the things that are happening. This is about eight minutes or so for the interview. So just take a listen. We'll come back and we'll do a little Q&A. And here we go. So what I want to do, of course, uh, we are coming up to that time, April 15th, when everybody either has to pay the taxes or they have to ask for an extension. But there's also a bigger time for IRAs. And this is the time point when we can actually contribute for last year, 2023. So what I want to do is I want to bring on somebody who could help us uh, cut to the noise. This is uh, Jared Feldman, who is the former head of client relations and now the SVP of operations. Jared, welcome to the show for second or third time, I think it is. Uh, I, I think it's the second time. Feels like the third, but thanks for having me as usual. It's great to see you. Yeah, absolutely, man. So as we get into this, you know, because April 15th is right around the corner. What I want to talk about is a couple of things. First of all, some of the reasons for iTrust. And then if we take a look at some of the differences between uh, the ETF uh, as far as like into your IRA and then a, a regular traditional Roth IRA through iTrust itself. So the first things first, there was this great piece that you guys put out talking about the top five reasons to open a crypto IRA. And of course, everybody knows I've been with you guys now for three years. And I would like to say, first of all, I really should say this first of all, thank you for grinding through the bear market and doing exactly what you said you would do and staying up so you can crush in the bull. I want to get that out of the way. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you for being around. I appreciate it. We certainly do what we can. What my experience in crypto has really showed that the companies that focus during the bear periods on building are the ones who really have success during the bull market. So we look forward to all the success that's going to come for everyone in crypto over the next 18 months. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, to do that, you know, this is the whole point. So five reasons. Now, we've talked about this in, in detail on the show. I mean, tax advantages, obviously, you know, when you open up a Roth IRA, wait to fifty nine and a half years old, or whatever age you are, plus five years when you open it up. And of course, there's massive tax advantages. There's a link in the description you guys can check out when we go over that in detail. But there's this one I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you last, which is the off balance sheet, but low fees, client experience, which of course you were a part of, and of course, investment options. But this part here, which has always concerned me, the off balance sheet options. So quickly, could you just talk to us about this and what centralized exchanges like Coinbase and Binance do and what you guys are opposite of them doing? Whenever I tune in to your show, one thing that always catches my eye, I'm even peeking at it right now, right, is the 100% scams, 0% on exchanges, 0% leverage, take profits, right? Because you and your audience have learned lessons, valuable lessons. It's true. One of those, 0% on exchanges. The reason why that's so important is because about two years ago, a lot of things came to light when people dug through the terms of service on exchanges, as well as some of the lending platforms that are now infamous. Mm -hmm. What they realized was that in those terms of service, it literally says that if something were to happen to those companies in the form of bankruptcy, they would lose the clients would lose access potentially to their funds because the funds would be subject to creditors because right. those funds are held on balance sheet for those companies, period. Now, our setup, we have a lot of regulations and compliance that are baked into our product because of the fact that we're an IRA provider and we have to plug into a qualified custodian to do what we do. Qualified custodians, as per their state charter and regulatory requirements, need to keep funds off balance sheet. Right. Off balance sheet means that if something were to happen to them, then the funds are not subject to creditors, which is just a huge differentiating factor. And it's a reason why people feel really comfortable on our platform, even though they're not able to hold the keys for the crypto in their IRA. Right. So, okay, let me ask you a question. Then. And I get this question a lot. Let's just say for some reason, that I trust something crazy happens and you guys go under. I don't think it's going to happen after this crazy bear market, but whatever. So let's say that you guys go under because it's off balance. What happens to those accounts? How do those get transferred? What would that actually look like? Because qualified custodians are state regulated entities, there is a process, an unwinding process that the qualified custodian would work with regulators to return the funds to the clients. Now, in reality, if something were to happen, 
these clients would in all likelihood just be able to move the funds to another IRA provider, to another qualified custodian. So if someone moved their funds over via an IRA transfer or a 401k rollover to begin with, they would have the opportunity to move to another IRA via transfer or maybe move it to their current 401k with their employer. Gotcha. Okay. Just because I, I get that question a lot. I'm going to actually cut that and put it into the next deep dive video that we, we talk about with iTrust. That was a good answer. Appreciate it. So let's talk about the other pieces here. Um, besides the off and on balance, low fees. And uh, we'll get the client experience for a second. But the low fees itself, I when I first got in, it was $29 a month. And that was, that was the fees. Plus it was 1%. But it looks like those fees, that's been over like a year, I think. But now we're looking at pricing, no monthly account fees, 1% transaction fee. And that's if you, of course, you know, when you buy or when you sell. And you guys also offer gold and silver, 50 and 250. So any changes to that or is that pretty much the same thing? No changes at this time. We did have the $29.99. I mean, that was, I think oh, we got yeah. rid of it at the end of 2021, which you know feels like 10 years ago in crypto, but that was just something where we're constantly trying to lower our pricing, be more competitive in the space. We originally made a name for ourselves by having more competitive pricing than the incumbents in the crypto IRA arena, who we felt like were dramatically overcharging. Now, it's not easy to do what we do, and it's not necessarily cheap to do what we do. There are inherent costs to having a qualified custodian and keeping the funds off balance sheet and utilizing a durable, renowned institutional storage providers and having the level of client service that we have and take a lot of pride in. But with all that said, we're always trying to be as competitive as possible with pricing. Yeah. And then another another place where you guys are actually competitive is uh, this would be this. You could speak directly to this because, of course, head of client relations, uh, client experiences. I got to tell you. When there's issues, because no one's perfect, right? When there's issues and I've reached out to you or Daniel over there, you guys have always taken care of it. So I can't say enough again, thank you for doing those things because I put my reputation on line. So I appreciate when you guys go above and beyond for all the things that we ask for. And that's either either on email, direct contact, or even when we do, you know, different contacts through X or what was called what's uh, formerly Twitter. So on the experience, I can't say enough about that. But how about this part here for the investment options? What are you guys, I guess, right now offering? Because it looks like I mean, I'll be honest with you, you guys have actually done a pretty good job because when I got in, it was just Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana wasn't there, XRP, Dogecoin, and then a couple. But now it's like, how many listings do you guys have now for all your cryptos? 35 digital assets are offered on the platform. And then yeah. we have the physical gold and the physical silver. It's the number one question that we're asked, particularly from the digital asset news viewers. They really want to know what we're working on next in terms of new assets we're going to add to the platform we've always been very conservative and cautious when it comes to adding new tokens i remember when people were calling us asking us to be more like celsius and be more like voyager and offer interest and they wanted us to add all these tokens and in particular i remember it was like a running joke that we had like 10 calls in a row were all asking us to add terra luna and we uh. I've always yeah. been cautious, right? We've we've tried to avoid uh, things that we and our legal team thought were overly risky. Now, with that said, we are taking new tokens seriously. We're looking into AI tokens. We're looking into some more meme coins, which I know are controversial. But you know, mm -hmm. if people uh, find the need to allocate some of their IRA into tokens that they deemed to be more fun, you know, at, at the end of the day, we want to be able to add things that people want to see. So we are working on things like that and hope to have announcements at some point in the middle or later this year on, on new assets. Gotcha. Well, yeah, perfect. And there's something to be said for just safety in general. And I, I will say before we get onto the, um, the ETFs and how that works out in IRAs, I want to say for everybody who was watching this at home, if you're taking a look at the different options that are available, Remember, this is for a retirement account. So when I take a look and I know that I have to I have to pay 1% for a transaction fee, I'm not really too keen in adding a lot of these cryptos because I don't know how long they're going to be around when I am at that retirement point at 59 and a half years old, which I got to tell you is coming up pretty fast. But when I take a look at this and I think to myself, what's going to be around for the long haul? 
what's really going to make it and what is just hype. And I got to tell you, there's a reason why Bitcoin is the is the primary crypto or digital asset in my portfolio. However, as a reminder, everybody, if you want to trade within your IRA account, it is tax free because it is within the IRA uh, in that preface. But just be aware that some of these will not be here forever and uh, just something to think about. All right. So, Jared, let's talk about this. I get this question a lot. What's the difference between with a Roth IRA with iTrust and then just doing something with, say, like an ETF through Fidelity or through BlackRock? Because they can add that to their IRA. So what's the pros and cons here? So an ETF is a great way to get exposure into digital assets. But right now, Bitcoin is the only digital asset that has an ETF. Right. So if people want to get exposure to some of the crypto and, and digital assets outside of Bitcoin, they yeah. don't have the opportunity to do so via an ETF offering. An ETF is also just getting price exposure. Right. So if you want to be right. able to ride the wave and, uh, and earn some of the gains that you feel are going to happen in crypto and be able to allocate assets into that, the ETF is a great way to do it at the same time. You don't have direct exposure and then 24 seven access. So if you're sitting there, uh, our clients can watch the PGA tour on Sundays and then they can buy and sell digital assets at their discretion, which you cannot do utilizing the ETF. And a lot of investors feel like they're going to miss out on opportunities by limiting themselves to the 32 and a half hours out of the 168 of the trading day. And that's, you know, regular retail markets are open 32 and a half hours out of the 168. So people feel that they're going to miss out on potential opportunities. Yeah, well said. I, I got to tell you, like, I understand that there's a lot of people who say, well, the ETF is just safer. It's easier for me and I don't have to custody it. So I guess the last question would be like, who who do you feel is like the ETF is for and who do you feel like, say, I trust is for? So I think that the ETF is geared for everyone. Don't get me wrong, but right. I do think that a lot of the flow that's been occurring into the ETFs are individuals and advisors that mm. couldn't do so until it was available as an exchange traded product, right? So there are people who are waiting on the sidelines that couldn't even do this until this kind of product was available. I think that this product from an ETF standpoint is also great for people who want to initially allocate capital into the digital asset space. It's a great vehicle to do so. What we really believe, though, is that after people do this, right, they put money into it and then they get educated as a result. And that's why we've always emphasized education and information. You can even see by these articles that you're sharing. We always put an emphasis on education because we think once people allocate, they're going to want to educate themselves. Once they educate themselves, they're going to want direct exposure and ownership as well as 24 seven access. And once they have that, we firmly believe that they're going to want to diversify into other digital assets that we and other crypto platforms offer. Yeah, I got to agree. I think there's uh, there's different strokes for different folks. And I think for some people it works out. But I think for the people that are on uh, this channel and watching this video, I think uh, it's might be it might be who a little bit better for I trust. And then, of course, uh, I will link this in the description, everybody. If you're taking taking a look at the uh, I trust uh, learn center, you can find a lot of different articles that are pretty good. And especially if you want to just uh, have different learning opportunities or if you want to orange pill somebody. Uh, this just send them this information. And then Jared, last thing be, before we take off, any uh, words of wisdom for the people that are just getting into crypto digital assets right now, or actually just any words of wisdom, because uh, you've gone through a couple of bull cycles yourself. I think if I were to give someone advice when they're getting into the space is to really focus on educating themselves, learning at their own pace and not getting caught up in a lot of the narratives because the narratives can get very mm -hmm. overwhelming. And I think people just need to stick to basics. And you know, for me personally, I love talking about the having because it's such an interesting concept that people who watch your show and mm -hmm. our clients who watch me on this show are gonna say, well, Jared, that's so obvious to talk about the finite supply of Bitcoin, right? That's a really low hanging fruit. But at the end of the day, what they don't realize is the mainstream 
people who are just learning about this space don't even realize and take for granted that there's a finite supply of Bitcoin. I was having dinner last week with someone in the hedge fund space. And when they learned I was in crypto, they made a joke that, oh, well, can't you just print more Bitcoin? And the irony is that that's not even remotely true. Now, there are some cryptos where you can make that quip, but you can't do it for Bitcoin. Right. So I think that once someone like that realizes the full potential of just Bitcoin alone, they're going to realize that there is a, a use case for this asset class and a reason why, you know, individuals, your barber, your grandmother, as well as big institutions are trying to allocate at least some of their capital into the space. Exactly. Well said. Well said, Jared. Well, everybody there, of course, there's links for everything we talked about. But if you're looking for more information or a deep dive, there's a link in the description. It looks just like this. And uh, that will take you to information on iTrust and for a sign up. Now, as a reminder, iTrust is a sponsor of the show. And if you do not want to use the affiliate link, that is fine. You can go right to iTrustCapital.com. But there is a sign up bonus and that's up to you. So, Jared, thanks so much for stopping by. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll have you back when uh, some new, more news comes in. Thanks, as usual. Awesome. Great. So again, Jared, thanks so much. And everybody, uh, thanks for sticking with me. So now that will conclude everything that has to do with the news. If you'd like to stick around, we'll do a little q and I'll answer all the questions to the best of my abilities. But if you got to take off and enjoy Easter, go enjoy Easter. It's a beautiful day. But if not, stick around. We'll answer some questions. We'll go from there. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for stopping by. Like and subscribe on the way out. And that is it. So let's see. Happy Easter, Des. Happy Easter, Nas. I was here with Darren. Nikki. Was again. London. <laughs> Everybody's here. It's a wrench party. You gotta love that. Let's see. Moringa says the finite 21 million went out the window when ETH and all the other blockchains were born. Now, since you can swap any coin back and forth into Bitcoin, that 21 million is invalidated. No, I don't think that's how it works. So any coin back and forth into Bitcoin. No, it's still the same thing. So it'd be like it'd be like saying, well, you know, there's only there's a finite amount of gold in there, and and that number doesn't really matter because you can just use as much silver that's out there or copper, and you can buy as much copper and swap it into gold. There's different numbers. So no, that's not how it works. I'm sorry to say, but uh, 21 million. And you have to also remember, and someone brought this up in the comment section, which was 100% uh, accurate. We don't really know how much has been lost since the Genesis block in 2009. Some people say it's 3 million. Some people say it's over 6 million. Nobody really knows. And uh, the reason we don't know is because some of this, this Bitcoin has never or has not been moved, but we just saw somebody move Bitcoin from 2010 and sell it at 70,000. So I don't know who diamond hands that, but congratulations for making billions of dollars just for hanging around for 14 years or so. And uh, that, is, uh, that is that for that piece. Let's see. <laughs> ah, Jenny, that's a good one. So yes, happy transgender day. So this was put out by the Biden administration just a couple of days ago. And today, Easter Sunday, is transgender day and it's a recognition day. So I don't know where the optics from that came from. This isn't a political channel. It's all about crypto and digital assets, but you have to understand that uh, the president and the, and the administration that is in right now has a lot to do with how far we get with regulations. And I got to tell you, I think this is going to play a big part in the presidential elections coming up for these types of things, but I'm not getting into that. Rob, did you ever check on adult new project on ETH with plus 18 content? No, I'm good with that. Although, if you have to remember, like uh, just how well the internet did, it really did because of adult content. And it wasn't just because we could, you know, put a bunch of blog posts up. It really kind of came about because of that 18 plus movement. Let's just say, let's just call a spade a spade. Let's see. The Shaolin says, if I could bring it up. Little issues. There we go. When you can move, and this is a good point, when you can move between all the layer twos without going to layer one, then you'll be sold on ETH, layer two. Plus, BlackRock is putting world world assets on ETH, probably layer two. Yeah, and there's a lot of these new projects that are coming out. Like, I'm going to do a deep dive video today. 
I want to show you guys something. There's a great website called L2.watch. And L2.watch, let's see. Whoops. Bring this up. L2.watch. L2.watch is, is layer twos for, for Bitcoin and the different projects that are coming out. I think that could be the next the next thing that's coming up. And look at these. And like my favorite, of course, is Stacks, which is down here somewhere. Wow, that's weird. So many. There's so many different projects coming out. But uh, yeah, if you can move on, on L2s on Bitcoin, the most secure network on the planet, I'm sold for that. It just depends on which one's going to make it. We'll see how it works out. But yeah, for you to, for me to just move L2 to L2 is great without going through uh, layer one. And some, some different products, you don't need to go to L1, but it's kind of few and far between. A lot of these new products that launch, they just want to get it out there. And they just launch on layer one Ethereum. I don't know why, but all right. Let's see. Well, yes, Tony, you are correct. Let's see. Stay humble. I use Engrave and Ledger. Both are good. I use Ledger. Engrave, some people love it. Like Meme, she's uh, been here for in the uh, comment section. Talks about Engrave, loves it. Daniel, did you sell any Solana at 210? No, I did not. Did not, but I will tell you, I forgot the sh for some reason it's not there. Oh, this is why. But remember the rules that we talk about as far as like taking, taking profits? Where did we go? Let's see if this is one. No. Like on that, uh, the one that uh, Stephen was talking about, so it's a cat. Shark cat. So shark cat doubled and I took my initial investment out because I don't know what's going to happen. So on that one I did, but Solana, I haven't taken any projects yet, but it's coming. It is coming. Fox Savage Gaming says most traffic should not be in layer one, especially Bitcoin. Most of the meme NFT swapping should be directed to L2. I would agree. <sighs> Darren says, Rob, last bull cycle. Did you have the urge to sell coins that were lagging and put that money towards coins that were running more? I'm having those urges now, but probably need to cool off. No, it wasn't at that point. It was at the point in the bear market when I was like, when I was taking a look at things that I thought would do well. And I'm like, why, why am I? Because these ones haven't done much of anything. I said, maybe I should just roll those into the ones that I think could do pretty well. And I did a couple, but most of them I just, Stayed the same because you never know. You you just never know the narrative that comes out. Like prime example will be Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin. I mean, they were named in that in that lawsuit and they were talked about as being uh, commodities. And of course, the price pumps just on some goofy news, regardless of if there is massive adoption, or if there's use case, or there's you know more wallets being produced or more transactions being done. It doesn't matter. It's just the story about how it's not a security and it, it blows up. So who knows in this situation? I just know that at some point we're going to start to, and it's getting there. It's again, if you want to find out like when I'm going to sell 80% of all my crypto is a link in the description and the video is titled when I'm selling 80% of my crypto. And I take a look at some indicators. And then from there, I'm not going to hit the top, but if I get within 60 to maybe 70% of the top, I'd be very happy. And that's fine. I'm good. Fox Savage Game. Wow, when's the last time you checked top indicators? Let's do that right now. Let's take a peek. Let's see. So I got this handy dandy folder called Cell Indicators. Let's take a look at the NUPL. Net unrealized profits and losses. And you can see here that it's derived from the market value and realized value. Realized value takes the price of each Bitcoin when it was last moved, subtract the realized value from the market value, and we get the unrealized profit and loss. So we can see that it's up there. Like I said, it's getting close. NUPL is 62%. What I like about looking to Bitcoin 
is first of all, it's free. And second of all, it's colorful. And I'm not a genius and I like colors because it makes things easy for me. I'm like, oh, it's green, time to buy. And it's orange, think about selling. And it's in the red, should sell. That's pretty much it. And uh, of course you can get into, <laughs> you can get into all the different technicals of it. Let's take a look at something else. Let's take a look at Pi Cycle Top. Now this one's one of the bigger ones, I think. Let's go to the 24 hour resolution. And again, this was retroactively looking at, this is was created, I believe in 2019. And it did a really great job in 2013, 2017. And it did a pretty good job of 2021 when it called it at 60,000. Now the top was around 67,000, 700, somewhere around there, but not too bad. And of course, this is when the 350 day moving average cross times two crosses over the 111 day moving average. And we can see that it's getting closer, but it hasn't gotten there yet. So that's something. And then time and risk bands. This, of course, is uh, the information I steal from Ben's website into the Cryptoverse. Don't tell him. But if you would like to sign up for it, there's a link in the description. And this is big stuff. Uh, I love this time and risk bands because right now, this is in Bitcoin. We're currently in the 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. So we're again, it's heating up. I want to sell somewhere around the 0 0.8 to 0 0.9, maybe 0 0.9. And of course, we ladder in, we ladder out, right? But what's great about this is I can take a look. Well, let's take a look at uh, ETH. ETH is currently the 0 0.7 to 0 0.8. Again, very hot. How about Solana? Solana is in 0 0.8, 0 0.9. So I really should be thinking about selling. You know what? I really should. Let's see what else we got. XRP, 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. All right. ADA. ADA is in 0 0.5 to 0 0.6. That's crazy. And so on and so forth. Let's see what else we got. Cell indicators, MVRV Z score. Nah, really happening. So again, market value versus realized value. Z score kind of takes out as much noise as you possibly can. We can see that it did a good job over here in 2021, 17, 13s, and we're not there yet. So just taking a look at that, I'm not really too, like I've got to sell everything at this point. So good, good reminder. Block Savage, thank you. Let's see. Has anyone watched the Peter Schiff versus Raul Paul debate? I did. Waste of time that I've I, I was watching this. It's like, and I've said this before, it's like discussing or debating a flat earther and saying, you know, the earth is round. No, it's not round. There's this, and you give them proof after proof after proof, and they just won't believe you, and they just can they just keep blowing right past it and then you give them as much information as you can and then they lie to you right to your face like my favorite my, this was my favorite part of that whole that 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 whole debate was when Schiff said because Raul Paul said well how much is it as far as like gold is as an intri intrinsic value how many people are using this for jewelry which is using that for the uh, chips or for uh the gold properties to put on transistors and Peter Schiff who is an expert so it's 50% or more. And then within five minutes, Raul Paul came back and said, you know, I just used chat GPT and it was 9%. So I don't know where 50% is. So 9% of gold. And before anybody blames me and says, I'm just a Bitcoin maximalist or something, which I don't know, crazy. Uh, I own gold and silver. I don't see a problem with it. So he said that and, he, and Raul Paul said, yeah, so you're telling me that 91% is just speculation. You're just saying it's going to go up. And then Peter Schiff's like, well, yeah, but blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, why do we Why do we invite this guy? And even I'm talking about it. This was, sorry, I just wasted three minutes of your time. I apologize. Do you know when Polkadot 2.0 will come on? I don't, but that would be very uh, great for the ecosystem. I'd love to see that happen, especially for, because I own Polkadot. It'd be great for me. John Velasquez is a very good point. He said, remember, ADA was lagging, and then it took off on its own last cycle. That's true. I remember when... You know, Cardano was three cents, four cents, five cents, and it went all the way up to 297. So, you know, you got to, again, this is one of those things where like, it's tough to sell or transfer things. You're like, well, it could go up, it could go up. And I, you know, I like the community. I like where it's going, I like the technology. So I'm going to hold on to it, see what happens. And that's it. Big on dot. 
I'm not saying I'm big on dot. I'm just, I'm happy when it goes up. We'll say that. Ah, that's a good, that's a great question. How many more coins exist now than last cycle? People only have for underperforming coins. It's only pump are going to be disappointed. I got to agree. And there was, um, keep in mind of this. I'm going to show you. Do you know how many coins from 2017 that were in the top 53? How many of those coins were actually in the top 53 in 2021? Let me show you. Because those didn't do well at all. Ba -ba 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 -ba. There is a spreadsheet. And I really should link this in the description, but I, I haven't done that yet. I put this together and I took a look at... <laughs> I took a look at the top... The top coins from 2017. September 17, 2017, which I got in November November something, 2017. This was the top 53. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, XRP, Litecoin, Cardano. Okay, we can all agree. Pretty good so far. Now we get in this crazy stuff. IOTA, Dash, NEM. Anybody remember those? Some do. Monero. Bitcoin gold was number 12. Come on. Stellar, EOS, NEO, Ethereum Classic 16, Tron still there. Qtum, BitConnect, I think we all remember that, was number 19. And then it gets like Populous, Omni Say Go, Lisk, Zcash, all right. Waves, yeah. Tether, Tether. Stratus, BitShares, I mean, all the stuff you're not going to remember. And then the question I, I said was how many of these in 2017? Did they get the, to at least their all-time high in 2021? And out of all the 53, 11 out of 53 or 20%. So I have to tell you, I think what Super Altum said is correct. I think people are going to be disappointed. But does that mean that they didn't do okay? Actually, if you take that same data and take a look at the 2021 high, so like Bitcoin Cash, the high was 3,000, 2021 high was 1,500, but the low was like, I want to say it was under $200. And a lot of these, you actually did okay if you would kept dollar cost averaging through the bear market. And that's the trick. You have to keep dollar cost averaging when it just goes lower and lower and lower and you think, this is not going to come back. What am I doing? I'm throwing sand in the ocean. And then it comes back. So that's the whole thing. And I made I made this mistake with uh, traditional equities and stocks. And uh, it didn't work out for me too well from, 27 to, well from 2021 to now. I just sold a bunch of my stocks when it S&P 500 hit an all-time high. I'm like, I didn't really do too well because I kept buying Bitcoin and crypto. And I didn't really care about stocks. And I just realized I'm like, hey, this you, the, only, the only way you can really do well is in the bear market when no one wants to buy. It just, it doesn't matter if it's in traditional equities, doesn't matter if it's, if it's in crypto, it doesn't matter if it's in precious metals, doesn't matter where it is. It's just how it goes. You just have to buy when nobody wants to buy. Now, some of these projects won't come back at all. And that's just true. BitConnect being one of them, Terra Luna, fill in the blank. It's just how it goes. Oh, Ryan says, I take profit in 2021. I purchased a new house. Ah, congratulations in cash. And now I'm retired. See, everybody, that's, that might be what you want to do, right? Everybody's goals are different. Some people are like, no, I want to save this for my kids or I want to put this to my grandkids. Or some people say, I just want a, a sweet upgrade to my 2018 Dodge Grand Caravan minivan, whatever that is, whatever you want to do. But for Ryan here, I'm sure that's what he want to do and he hit his goals. Congratulations. That's great. Uh, where dogs thrive, says Rob, since I have no... I'm nowhere near one Bitcoin. I'm hesitant to sell when it goes higher because I feel like it's just going to get bought up by the big boys, leaving me too little to buy back in. I'm conflicted. Here's the question. And really, you have to think about it this way. Like, if you sell, do you do you need the money right now? That's the big thing, right? Do you need the money? Do you have a emergency fund of where if something happens to you, you can sustain yourself for six months? Do you have massive bills you have to pay that are making you underwater? And if the answer is no, you know, I'm, I'm pretty self-sufficient, I'm good. The question then you have to ask yourself is, do I need to sell right now? Or do I think things are going to go up 
And that's, for me, that's why I look at these indicators like we just took a look at, which thank you for reminding me to do that. <clears throat> for me, it doesn't sell, it doesn't say for me to sell Bitcoin right now. Does that mean that it can't go to, z I'm not gonna say it's going to zero. That's, that's, I think that's, that's ridiculous to say at this point. But do I think it can go down? Sure. But do I think the bull runs over? No. So for dogs thrive, I, for me, if it's me, I'm not selling right now. I think we've got a long runway to go. But it depends on what your needs are, what you want to do. I think the big thing is for everybody just, just like with Ryan, to figure out, like, what, are my, what do I want to do here? What are my goals? Like, do I want to pay off my house? Do I want to retire myself? Do I want to retire my whole family? This is what this was a really good point that uh, Lady in Crypto talked about. She said, the last bull run, I was able to retire myself, essentially. This bull run, I want to be able to retire my 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 family, my mom and my dad. I'm like, that's a pretty great goal. So it depends on what you want to do. I'll just leave it at that. I try. <laughs> a pizza pie is not round. It's flat. Only the good pizzas. Not that, not that junk that they serve up in Chicago. Sorry, I'm not a big deep dish guy. Uh, yeah, that's true. And the has got a good point. Maybe he's just created the Bitcoin persona for the cloud. Maybe so. I just don't see the point of wasting time. Ah, uh, see, we keep getting Bitcoin is that trillion dollar coin the government proposed on making, letting people buy the future. Could be. There's a lot of uh, theories that the uh, not the NSA created it, but someone who worked with the NSA actually created Bitcoin. It was a good uh, it was a good piece by from he from Da Vinci who was on uh, London Real and talked about that. It was fascinating. If you ever have a chance, look up uh, Da Vinci London Real Bitcoin, and uh, it was a good it was eye opening. We'll say. Welcome. D says, hey, are you going to stream on DJ after you sell 80%? Debatable. I don't know. So everybody knows that once I sell that crypto, I step down from this channel because you don't need me. You don't need a pep talk in the bull run. Who needs a pep talk in the bull run? Like, I'm just going to tell you, like, look, I sold and that's it. And then, of course, I can just predict what's going to happen. Uh, I will be called a boomer and a paper hands and weak. And uh, that'll be for the tourist. And I'll say, well, could be right. And uh, that'll be it. And then, of course, the, you guys who are here are not tourists yet. You'd be like, hey, good job. You know, that's what you want to do. That's it. And then I step down and then I don't come back until the bear market. I might stream. I, I won't stream on uh, Dan DJ on the second channel. That's for more risky stuff. But I'll probably put some videos out here and there. I mean, that'll be it. But uh, I'll, the, I'll have to make new rules for the Dan DJ channel. And the big rule, I think the number one rule will be remember to take profits. That'll be it. <laughs> John says, Rob will dump all his EOS on us. If Beardy ever dumps all the EOS on us, then we got problems. Peggy says, you would sell all your Bitcoin. No, because again, in that video, I talk about selling 80% of my crypto. Because remember, I think one of the big problems is people go, well, if I sell, and there's a big, massive, crazy, you know, blow off top, because who knows? You know, like Guy talks about a coin bureau. Uh, central banks are going to be able to buy Bitcoin and put it on their balance sheet in 2025. So what if we get nation states, not just El Salvador, but a lot of different uh, countries that start to put that on their balance sheet and make it legal tender? And then they start to buy it up as, you know, the underlying asset that backs up everything. Well, in that situation, I'm glad I kept 20% of my of my Bitcoin and 20% of my other altcoins because it'll just go through the roof and it'll be crazy. If I sell 100%, then I'm out of the game. And then some people will say, well, Rob, I want to be out of the game totally. I want to sell 100%. Cool, that's good. Then you sell everything and off you go. And, you know, drink Mai Tais on the beach. And I'm going to tell you right now, I tried to do that and it's very boring. You're going to need purpose, but that's not for me to give to, to tell you. So if that happens to you, yeah. But for me, Peggy, I won't ever sell all of it. There'll always be something. And that's a, a, one of the last points I want to make. When you're investing into assets, you'll never stop. You'll probably, for the most of you, you'll never stop investing into assets. And at some point, 
your crypto could dominate your life, but maybe at some point you get into my favorite, which would be real estate, land. And you get into that and start to cultivate those endeavors, or maybe you get you move more towards precious metals or equities or something like that, or real estate investment trust or something, but you'll never really get out because there's always opportunities you'll see it. The big thing is of course, risk tolerance and uh, risk avoidance and and of course, how you can manage all that moving forward. That's it. All right. Thanks, Peggy. On that note, I got five bucks. I can go buy half a gallon of milk here in Puerto Rico. So I'm pretty happy. That's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. That is it for Sunday. And of course, we will see you maybe tomorrow. I got a lot of things, uh, some deep dives to do. So maybe on a Tuesday. But anyhow. Thanks so much, everybody. Enjoy Easter. Happy Easter. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.